Hello, good evening. Welcome to Monday's Look North. A man has appeared in court charged with murder after a woman died in Leeds on Saturday. Emergency services were called to Tempest Road at around a quarter past one on Saturday afternoon and found the body of a 48-year-old woman. George Chalmers, who's 53 and from Tempest Road, appeared before magistrates this morning but didn't enter a plea. He's due at the Crown Court on Wednesday. Councils across Yorkshire and the Humber will receive an extra £47 million as of today to help people struggling with the cost of living. The money is an extension of the government's household support scheme, which was launched in 2021. It's to help with the cost of essentials like food and energy bills. Local authorities can decide exactly how to spend the money depending on local needs. Now, when Anthony Henson from Ripon was diagnosed with terminal cancer, he still had dreams of walking the Pennine Way, a journey of some 268 miles between Derbyshire and the Scottish borders. Sadly, the reality of his treatment means that's not possible. But instead, Anthony has decided to walk the exact same distance by doing laps of his own back garden. Phil Connell has been to meet him. Just getting myself ready to uh, do today's walk. In his range soaked garden near Ripon, Anthony Henson is imagining the Pennine Way. It normally takes around 19 days to complete the 268 mile walk. Coping though with stage four cancer, Anthony is doing it his way, step by step, a few miles every day in his own back garden. I have to do it here because I have to isolate due to the treatment that I'm having. Um, it makes it a lot easier. The Pennine Way is a lot flatter in my garden than it is in reality. So how many laps of the garden do you think this is going to take? Oh, thousands. Anthony has been diagnosed with a rare type of pancreatic and liver cancer. And now, thousands of laps on, his marathon walk is almost complete. It began in July last year. His goal to raise £10,000 and stay fit. The fitter I am, uh, the better chance I have of living longer with my diagnosis. So getting up every day and doing a walk is very important to me. Keep those legs moving. And this is where the £10,000 raised will be spent. These special fitness classes in Harrogate are run by Active Against Cancer. And in recent years, they've helped not just Anthony, but thousands of other cancer patients too. 268 miles, yeah, it, it must have a big gun. But again, what he's doing, knowing the treatment he, that he's had, is a really, really uh, phenomenal achievement. It'll make this service a lot more accessible. We're very lucky here to, to be able to access it. Uh, it's something that really should be national. Um, it gets people to recover quicker from cancer when they have got the all clear, gets them back into work and back to their normal lives. And cheered on by his wife and children, Anthony's version of the Pennine Way should be complete in the next few days. For him and his family, an inspiring and emotional journey. Yeah, they've been absolutely amazing. Couldn't have done it without them. Phil Connell, BBC Look North, Ripon. Now, hundreds of people have taken part in the World Coal Carrying Championships in Gawthorpe near Wakefield today. Men and women ran just over a kilometre carrying huge sacks of coal on their backs, and there are children's races too. The event has been going for 61 years now. Olivia Richards was there. Don't underestimate the weight of these sacks of coal. Each one is 50 kilograms, that's about eight stone, carried more than a kilometre uphill. As all these things often start, it was a bit of banter between uh, three men in a pub. There was a coal man and a farmer, and uh, one of them said, you look tired. He said, well, I'm fitter than you are. He said, well, I'll tell you what, get a bag of coal on your back and I'll get one on mine and we'll have a race from the Royal Oak to the Maple Green. And there was born the World Coal Carrying Championships. This is the 61st event, and this year there are more than 200 adults taking part including Phil Ounsley, father of the Gladiator Fury, who competed in the veterans race. I'd love to say I enjoyed it, but I hated every minute of it. It was absolutely brutal. And I remember now why I haven't done it in the last 16 years. No, it was tough. Jody or Fury, took part in the kids' fun races throughout her childhood. But as a professional rugby player, she's now not allowed. It's been a big part of our family's lives. Your family and friends come up as they are today as well. Every year I come here, I'm itching to run. I would love to do it, so maybe once I retire from rugby, I'll, I'll make my come back as well and do it with my dad. 
There are different age categories and the women carry a lower weight sack. The whole event is a huge community effort. Just look at the crowds and the people and oh, it's just amazing. It's just like seeing the kids enjoying themselves, people coming from all over the country. This year's eldest competitor is David Page, who finished the race to huge applause. The hardest one I've ever done. I've done it ten times altogether. I think that'll be my last now. Plus I'm basically 77. But that was horrendous. This year, the kind of coal carried in the sacks has had to change because house coal is now banned from sale for environmental reasons. But as a tradition, the World Championships, which put Gawthorpe on the map every Easter Monday, remains very much the same. Olivia Richwald, BBC Look North. I feel worn out just watching it. Now, it's been a good day today, weather-wise, for ducks this bank holiday weekend, and hundreds of people made the most of it in Endcliff Park in Sheffield this afternoon for the annual charity duck race. 2,000 ducks were released into the River Porter. They float down the river for 450 metres, where they are captured in a specially designed finish line. OK, let's check out the weather prospects now with Keely Donovan. Hello there, good evening. The unsettled theme to the weather continues through the next week. Tomorrow doesn't look too bad, but there are some showers in the forecast. Generally, though, low pressure is going to be in charge with showers or longer spells of rain on Wednesday. Most of the showers should now have eased and we're looking at a dry night with clear spells. A chilly night and we could see a little bit of mistiness in a few spots. Temperatures dropping low enough for a touch of ground frost down to two or three degrees. So a fine start to the day tomorrow, but a chilly one. I think eventually we'll start to see the cloud bubbling up and that will produce a scattering of showers. But uh, plenty of dry and bright weather in between those showers, just a light breeze and temperatures just above average for the time of year, reaching around 13 or 14 degrees. Looking further ahead on Wednesday, showers or longer spells of rain pushing northwards. We've got another bout of rain on Thursday too. It looks unsettled for Friday and the weekend. Temperatures creeping up and over the weekend it looks blustery as well. Thanks Keely and thank you for watching. I'll be back with a Labour Listen at 20 past 10. We'll see you then. Good night. <laughs>